So let's talk about Pokemon Home. This is an upcoming cloud-based service that will allow people to store Pokemon and transfer them over to different Pokemon games. Currently with Sword and Shield, there is no way to transfer stuff from Pokemon Bank, the previous storage service. Pokemon Home is going to be the new solution and it's coming out in February 2020. Until today, we didn't know about pricing and some of the features that it would offer, but just today, Nintendo released pricing models and the like. So let's check out what the pricing plan is for Pokemon Home. So for one month, you can pay $3. For three months, you can pay $5. And then for a whole year, you can pay $16. Obviously, the most cost-effective version of this paid service would be to go for the $16 version. But if you want to just try this out, you could go for $3 a month. There is a basic version that you don't have to pay money for, but comes with a lot less features. For premium, you get the ability to move Pokemon from Pokemon Bank. If you're on the basic plan and you have Pokemon in the bank, you cannot transfer those over to home. You do need to start shelling out money for Pokemon Home, regardless of whether you know, you're know you paying $5 a year for Pokemon Bank. And then for premium, you get uh, 6,000 Pokemon that can be deposited, whereas the basic, the free model of Pokemon Home, you only get to keep 30 Pokemon in storage. Storing 30 Pokemon is pretty freaking useless. This is the big feature that a lot of people want, the ability to store Pokemon and carry them over. Only being able to store 30, for a lot of the dedicated Pokemon fans who have hundreds if not thousands of these Pokemon that they want to store, this basic plan is not gonna do it for them. It's just, uh, I mean, it's there for, I guess, the casual people who want to transfer like a couple Pokemon here and there. But if you are an avid player, you pretty much have to get this $15 a year or $16 a year premium plan because the free option is plain and simply not viable for those people's needs. Next up, number of Pokemon that can be placed in the Wonder Box at once, three Pokemon versus 10 Pokemon. So Wonder Box, for those who don't know, Wonder Trading is the system where you kind of put a Pokemon out there and then you get a random one in return. You get connected to another player's Wonder Trade and you kind of randomly exchange Pokemon that way. It's been a system that's been in place in past Pokemon titles and Sword and Shield has a version of that called surprise trade and with that i believe you can only do one pokemon at a time so with this basic pokemon home you can do three at a time and then with the premium you can do 10 at a time and it makes that process a whole lot faster for people who just want to get rid of pokemon that they're not using and trade them for something else something potentially good so there's that Number of Pokemon that can be placed in the GTS at once, one Pokemon versus three Pokemon. So for those who don't know what global trading system is, it's just a better trading system than what Sword and Shield has right now. And this is a system that was in place in previous Pokemon games, it was just in the games. But with Sword and Shield, they excluded that in order to implement that system as part of Pokemon home and you do have a basic model here that allows you to trade one pokemon at a time next up we have room trade if you are a basic user you can participate in rooms hosted by the people who are paying premium and then if you pay premium you can actually host the rooms and bring people in i think up to 20 people per room maximum that can essentially just trade with each other so that's another feature and then finally judge function in Pokemon, if you go in game, you can check out Pokemon stats and determine how strong they are. Uh, this is something you'll be able to do with Pokemon Home only if you pay for premium. For basic users, that is unavailable. You'll just have to do that in game rather than through Pokemon Home. Of all of these features, the main functionality of Pokemon Home is the ability to deposit Pokemon 30 versus 6,000. And as I said before, the basic plan just won't do it for the hardcore Pokemon players. They have to pay $16 a year. I don't know about you, but that to me is a very steep price. They've essentially tripled the price point of Pokemon Bank, which was $5 a year now we have sixteen dollars a year which is a little more than triple actually and i don't find this pricing plan to be in line with what other services offer i mean you consider how google drive for twenty dollars a year 
that offers 100 gigabytes of cloud storage. You look at that and compare to 6,000 Pokemon storage for $16 a year, and there's just something wrong with that picture, if you ask me. There's simply no way that the storage of 6,000 Pokemon is actually worth $16 per user every year. And not to mention that conveniences like 10 Pokemon instead of 3 Pokemon for the Wonder Box, or 3 Pokemon at once versus 1 Pokemon in Global Trading System, those are just issues that Nintendo's introducing so they can sell back the solution. They're just purposely setting these artificial limitations to give the illusion that Pokemon Home has value when all of this stuff is just Nintendo coding the game and the ecosystem of Pokemon a certain way. But yeah, $16 a year to store 6,000 Pokemon. Meanwhile, I'm paying $20 a year for 100 gigabytes of Google Drive. It just, it doesn't make sense to me for this to be this freaking expensive. It should be $5 a year like it was with Pokemon Bank. And then right here we have a page detailing how you can transfer Pokemon. So Pokemon Home will become the de facto way to store Pokemon and transfer them over to future games. Pokemon Bank will be rendered moot. And knowing this, Nintendo is forcing you to pay for the premium Pokemon Home subscription so you can actually transfer Pokemon from Bank to home. If you have the basic model, keep in mind, you cannot do a transfer from bank to home, even if you're paying $5 a year for bank. And with Pokemon Caught and Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, you can transfer them to home, but you cannot transfer them back. And then with Pokemon Go, you can also transfer Pokemon to home and then bring all of those to the latest entry, Sword and Shield. And then Pokemon Bank here, of course, represents every previous entry uh, behind uh, Eevee and Pikachu. And again, the transferring from bank to home requires payment. And Nintendo knows this full well, and they know that that's inconvenient, but that makes them money, so... You know, there you go. This next page highlights the various features of Pokemon Home. So here's some information about the Wonder Box, the global trading system, room trade. And then here is some detail about friend trade. Basically any Pokemon Home user you add as a friend, you can trade with more easily. And I believe this is a feature that's both for basic and for premium. So at least there's that. And then we have one more page that talks about additional features that Pokemon Home offers. So there is the national Pokédex that you can browse through as part of both basic and premium, mystery gifts and judge Pokemon. Uh, again, for judge, you do need premium in order to be able to check out your Pokemon stats and strengths, and there's all this other stuff. And then here's a discrepancy between the Nintendo Switch version of Pokemon Home and the mobile phone version of Pokemon Home. Certain features won't be available in one or the other. Namely, for some reason, the Switch version of Pokemon Home won't allow you to trade Pokemon. So the global trading system can only be done on the mobile phone version, which a lot of people are baffled by, which is kind of a strange inconvenience and then a couple other stuff like the ability to receive mystery gifts, check battle data, and check news won't be available on the Switch version of Pokemon Home. So as far as basic information goes for Pokemon Home, this is pretty much all you need to know. But uh, consider that on top of $16 a month, you are paying for the base Pokemon games, you know, $60 per version. And then there is the Switch online pricing, which is $20 a year, or uh, $35 a year for eight people if you have a family plan that you can share with others. And then there is the Pokemon Expansion Pass, which is $30 per version. So if you want to get uh, an expansion for Sword and an expansion for Shield, you're going to be shelling out a grand total of $60. And both different versions of the Expansion Pass do offer some variations in content, so the hardcore players might want to get both. So that's 60 plus 60 plus 30 plus 30. Once you start adding all of this up, the fact that Pokemon separates content between two versions of the same game, the fact that there are multiple subscription models that you have to undergo, so on and so forth, the expansion passes and the DLCs, you begin to realize, at least I'm realizing, that being a Pokemon fan in this day and age is very expensive. And what's especially egregious about all of this is that Pokemon does pay for itself. It isn't like a franchise that's in dire need of monetization. This is just the value proposition isn't there. You know, if it were $5 a year, maybe, you know, that, that might work out, you know, if it were the same pricing point as Pokemon Bank. 
But $16 a year for this? Come on. As for what the Pokemon community is saying, especially on the Pokemon subreddit, where a lot of the hardcore fans are, well, there is already a Reddit post on this, and there is a number of opinions on this. Here are a few that I'd like to highlight. This one Reddit user said, Honestly, the most baffling thing aside from the ridiculous price increase is why the fuck is the global trading system and trading exclusive to the mobile version only? Like, why is that not on the Switch version of Home? What's the point of having Home on the Switch aside from transferring your old Pokemon. Again, a very strange inconvenience nobody quite understands. And then here's another user highlighting some of the weird elements of this whole Pokemon Home service and some of the things that a lot of people have qualms with. So let me get this straight. With just the free version, you can't transfer from Bank, just from Sword and Shield and Let's Go. But you can only transfer 30 Pokemon at a time. And if you transfer Pokemon into Home that can't go into Sword and Shield, then you can only move them back into Let's Go. All right, that seems like a problem that Game Freak and the Pokemon Company gave themselves. And actually, this user is wrong. According to this chart right here, once you transfer stuff from Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu to home, you cannot transfer that back. That's a one-way street. As for what this individual is talking about when they say Pokemon that can't go into Sword and Shield, we all know about Dexit and how there are a number of Pokemon, over half of them, that didn't make it into Sword and Shield. There is no National Dex in that game, so there are certain Pokemon that you might store in home, but can't use them in Sword and Shield anyway, because they literally have not been programmed into the game. Now, some of that will be mitigated with a new expansion pass, which will add back over 200 well-known Pokemon from the past that have been cut, but that's still not all the Pokemon. And because Pokemon Home won't allow you to transfer things back from Pokemon Home to Bank or to Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, once you make that transfer and if it turns out that those Pokemon aren't in Sword and Shield or part of the expansion pass and they're kind of just stuck in home and you can't do anything with them. And that's why this other Reddit user said the free one month Pokemon bank is useless unless the Pokemon that are in the DLC can be transferred from home during the free month. And this is referring to the fact that Nintendo is giving out one free month of Pokemon bank if you get the premium subscription of Pokemon Home. And then another user added, also, it only says bank is free for a month, but the free home plan does not allow transferring from bank. So there's just layers of inconveniences when you look at the whole picture. Here we have a Reddit user talking about why this price point is ridiculous, stating that is a very greedy price point if I've ever seen one. $16 a year for storage and extra server usage. That in no way makes sense. Storage is cheap, stupidly cheap, and the data needed for even 6,000 Pokemon isn't that much. Judging by the fact that a .pkm file appears to be 344 bytes, storing 6,000 is only 2.064 megabytes. Assuming a generous 10 million users, far more than total sales so far, I believe, that is about 20.6 terabytes. Only one year of those users keeping a subscription would yield $160 million. Enough storage for that 20 terabyte is under $800. When with lots of redundancy expected in a server, environment and many duplicate servers spread across the world for speed, you would be looking at something in the ballpark of $30,000 for worldwide storage. That is probably a gross overestimate, but even still, the profit involved with Pokemon Home is going to be astronomical. In other words, $16 a year is not worth what little amount of data is actually being stored. Even with 6,000 Pokemon, it is calculated that that's around 2.064 megabytes, which is not a lot. And even if that is an under estimation, even if 6,000 Pokemon is a little more than 2 megabytes, it certainly still isn't $16 a year worth of data that's being stored. But Nintendo can get away with charging $16 a year because ultimately this is the only solution available right now to transfer Pokemon because Nintendo has set certain artificial restrictions to that effect. And then here's one more Reddit user who talked about not only how $16 a year for this is ridiculous, but also all the other things you're paying for to play Sword and shield and other Pokemon game in the most optimal manner. So this reads, Bank and Home prey on a point that we have to have our living dexes, our collections, our everything. The fact that this storage system exists at not $15, but $16 a year is ridiculous. 
This is a system that used to inherently exist in the games themselves. This is megabytes of data being stored online as opposed to locally on the Switch or game card purely from the point that they know they can charge for it so that people can preserve their collections because emotional attachment is that strong to it. Owners should be willing to take a hard look and ask themselves if they think having a subscription to be allowed to store Pokemon is something they want to continue to have. In the time since Black and White 2, you went from having a $40 game to $60 game, $30 DLC, $20 online subscription, and $15 storage subscription. And keep in mind that the $20 online subscription and the $15 storage subscription are recurrent expenses, so over time you'll incur quite the cost just for Pokemon. And then right down here, more users talk about how small and minuscule the data is when it comes to Pokemon storage, and that 6,000 Pokemon is not a lot of data to store, certainly not worth that $16 a year. So that's where we're at right now. This is what the pricing model is like, what the features available are, and how the basic is separated from premium, and what people are generally saying about Pokemon Home. While there are those out there who'd happily pay $16 a year for this, there are plenty of others who see that this is woefully overpriced, that the value isn't there that Nintendo's overcharging just because they can. Perhaps this would all mull over better if Nintendo delivered a complete product with Sword and Shield. Those are games that definitely felt like they needed a few more months, an extra year of development and polish, and the expansions feel like they're completing an incomplete base and foundation rather than extrapolating upon a complete product. So that kind of paints a negative picture. The whole Dexit situation where over half the Pokemon were missing for reasons and excuses that do not seem particularly valid, all of that also contributed negatively to the uh, optics surrounding this generation of Pokemon. And now the addition of $16 a year to store 6,000 Pokemon. Suffice to say that there is a portion of the fan base that are not pleased by the current state of this series, especially given that this is a series that hasn't evolved all that much since its inception. Pokemon feels stagnant right now, and for them to just be adding extra layers of monetization without evolving the Pokemon series first and really taking it to the next level graphically or from a gameplay standpoint when it comes to systems and mechanics. It all reinforces this notion and sentiment that Pokemon is starting to look more and more like a lazy cash grab rather than a series that Nintendo is genuinely passionate about. And when you consider that they release a new Pokemon game pretty much every year, do they really need to charge $16 a year? to store 6,000 Pokemon. They're making so much money off of the Pokemon franchise that this pricing model is woefully unnecessary. It's, it just feels like it's monetization for the sake of monetization, not out of necessity. But you know, that's just one man's take and that's sort of what some people are saying out there. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on this Pokemon Home pricing and the features that it offers. Do you like what's here or do you feel like I do where this just feels overpriced and kind of in bad taste? Drop a comment below and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.